Hey everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And today, I'm going to be playing in the Tier 10 Czechoslovakian Medium Tank. Czechoslovakian tanks being a very hot topic at the moment, considering that Wargaming just announced and showed us the Czechoslovakian heavy tanks that will be coming out, hopefully, to a test server soon. But just because the heavy tanks are going to be the, the next big thing inside World of Tanks in 2021, doesn't mean that we can't have a throwback to what was when it first went into the game, I think in 2015, and kind of still is now, the ultimate burst damage medium tank. This is the TVP T50-51. This tier 10 Czechoslovakian medium tank was revolutionized in equipment 2.0 with you now able to use a rotation mechanism to further reduce the dispersion values on the gun. And the highlight of the vehicle is... I mean, it really speaks for itself. Burst damage. We were able to do 1,401 bursts to the E50M there. Is that because it's a weak tank? Well, that's debatable. Or is it down to the fact that this thing is absolutely voracious? It pretty much has like a Soviet-esque... 100 millimeter gun with 320 alpha damage not the best penetration 248 so you have to be shooting weaker targets or alternatively you, you load the high explosive anti-tank with 310 millimeters of penetration and then you can just do some absolutely disgusting things to the enemy team and you can take some chances as well we're having a tvp shoot off here with 1.5 seconds intra clip reload for its four round autoloader which is capable of doing 1280 damage within four and a half seconds of the first shot you really don't want to sit in front of these things for very long now the reason why i say that equipment 2.0 kind of revolutionized this tank is because autoloaders are all based around their dispersion values and arguably their aim time as well now the thing about this tank is its aim time has always been magnificent 2.1 seconds before Equipment 2.0, your only real option to improve the combat capacity on this tank was to try and improve the aim time to, a, to enable you to pull off snapshots like that without really having to aim for a very long period of time. However, aim time and gun laying drives, I can't imagine many tanks, if any vehicles, are using them these days when there are far better choices available. You have the rotation device now, which reduces the dispersion value when you're moving, when you're turning the turret, and importantly also, after you fire by 10, or alternatively, if you have a, a bounty rotation device, 15%. This stacks with vertical stabilizers, which if you've got bounty vert stabs, I think it's at 25% as well. Giving this vehicle, as I am using both bounty equipment on this tank, 40% reduced dispersion after firing. This means that you can just unload as accurately as you really want to while still maintaining that just crazy burst of 1.5 seconds into a clip reload. Okay, so this EBR-105 has asked me to pull back and yeah, this is a bit of an awkward situation. I wanted to come forwards into this dip because I know that I've got good view range on this tank. It's got 410 meters base view range. And so I decide to fall back and, you know, I can't get into that bush without getting spotted because my camera rating isn't fantastic. So hopefully by falling back here and allowing the EBR to push the bush, then he's going to go up there and hopefully spot for our team to allow us to start to break out the camp. I think that uh, I think that what's happening is I'm most likely getting spotted from a T100LT who's towards this location here, possibly even sitting in that bush. So by instead of going around the corner and coming up and possibly getting caught with vision in the side, by just making my way straight up the slope into the bush, I should be able to avoid the vision from there. The only problem with doing that is that if you have tanks that are up above you in this position, you're not able to do that because they spot you. And so make use of that when you're trying to get into those bushes to try and use that position. If they're above you there, watch out because you can't just go straight up. But if they're down below you over there, watch out because you can't go down and around. In the end, it's just going to have to be something that you try and feel out about how can you sneak up into that location. But once you get up there, oh, it's, it's pretty darn good. But look at this gun handling. One, two, and then will we find a gap in the bushes? Oh. It's just the best burst damage inside the game, really, on any medium tank. What this thing is capable of doing in those kind of targets, if you uh, get a little bit lucky, or maybe if you've got some alright aim, then, yeah, the TVP will be definitely the one for you. But it's really about combining, hopefully, those good aspects of your game with the right equipment setup, and then that makes this thing truly monstrous. 
Having that 40% reduced dispersion just revolutionized the way that I was really able to play the TVP. Combine that with vents on this tank as well to make just everything about the vehicle a little bit better. And I think you're on to a real winner with this tank. So those new Czechoslovakian heavy tanks, are they going to make this vehicle redundant? No, they're not, they're not competing with this vehicle for its mobility and with its burst potential. Those new Czechoslovakian heavy tanks are looking like they're going to have not the same kind of gun, but a two round burst. And their alpha damage, unless you're looking at the uh, the tier 8 premium heavy, which I, I showcased on the channel, or at least the statistics on the channel on Friday. Yeah, that, that's going to be pretty sick to have that 920 damage in four seconds unless Wargaming decide to nerf it. But it's not the same as having 1,280 within, within four and a half seconds of the first shot. So I'm in, a little, I'm in a little bit of a loss as to what to do in this scenario. We've got our team up on the hill who, who looked like they were camping, but now they're wanting to push down. I'm worried about the, the cross vision. Clearly the enemy team, a lot of their tank destroyers will be sitting in the woods, and it's quite a challenge to be able to dig them out in this scenario. We have an M48 towards the south who's trying to do battle with a K91 who just lost their duel. And I'm very worried because the position that the K91 is now in, if they, become, if they come within the render distance of me and I manage to get spotted, they're going to be picking us apart fairly quickly. So what I'm hoping right now is that my team towards the hill will continue to venture down. We've even got our artillery up there and great stuff. Our team actually just managed to shut down a 277 that was caught in the woods and they've got an IS-7 spotted out as well. I'm hoping that they're going to continue to just slowly or maybe not too slowly push their way into the woods, get some more vision and then allow me to develop a crossfire because this game is still fairly even. In fact, the enemy have got one more vehicle than we have and so we've got to be very careful. When you're pushing into these woods, it's hard to say whether you should do it quickly or whether you should do it slowly. If you do it slowly, at least one by one, you stand the chance that you're going to get spotted one by one, and then all of the tank destroyers who are likely camping in the woods are going to be able to shut you down very quickly indeed. But if you all do it very quickly, then sometimes you can get yourself into a big ambush, right? I think the highlight is that hopefully you've got a medium tank or a light tank who's going to be able to help you out to enable you to be able to get those shots into the woods. But at this kind of a game, once the e unless the EBR decides they're going to flank around and come after to help us out, it's not going to work out too well for us. So I have to admit, in this replay, I was kind of covering for the fact that I think I was AFK for a minute or two. I think I had... I, I, can I claim an emergency? I don't know. Probably a snack emergency, maybe a drink emergency. I don't know. Possibly. But I came back, and then the TVP's wrath was unleashed on the M60. A little bit of respite, you know? When you're in this kind of bursty tank, it's really not a good idea to be kind of going AFK for a minute or two in the middle of the battle, especially in one which is as close as this. But hopefully, we're going to be able to turn it around and take a look to see what has happened with the situation. And that is that there's a T100 LT and a K91 who for some reason aren't capping. So I was thinking to myself, if they're going to cap, shall I make my way back to defend the cap circle? That's why I was driving towards this location. However, then I realize, well, if they're not capping, maybe they're trying to hunt our artillery trying to flank out. And while I'm waiting to decide which position I'm going to go into, I'm just going to put four out of four into a Stritzbang 103B, dealing over a thousand damage to their vehicle and shutting them down. Now I realize, and I ping the map, that, oh, well, if the enemies aren't capping, then that means that their light tanks, of which the AMX 13105 is still not spotted, are probably going to be advancing their way up the hill. So I tell this Conqueror gun carriage, don't worry, buddy, I'm going to help you. And you see the Conqueror gun carriage actually just stops just going down the slope and instead turns round. Are they going to actually assist me with some shells? Well, that would be the absolute dream in this scenario. As the T-125 gets spotted out down below me, I'm thinking, shall I shoot at this T-125? Shall I, shall I, shall I, shall I? No, no, no. That's just a distraction from inevitably what will be the decider in this game. And that's whether that I can stop these tier 10 light tanks from getting behind my team and shutting us down. So I actually bounce the first shot while this vehicle does have really good gun handling. Unfortunately, it can't account for some poor RNG. We put three out of four into the T100 LT, not enough to be able to shut them down. The T100 LT, a knowledgeable, knowledgeable player, probably counted all the shells from the TVP and realizes that they can turn around to come after us. But what they're probably not anticipating is firstly, this vehicle is quite mobile. And secondly, yeah, it has 1,603 damage per minute. Way bigger than the Bat Chatillon that the vehicle was a huge competitor for when it came out in the game in 2015. 
before the TPP just went, hey, hey, I'm here, I got 8 degrees of gun depression, huge DPM and big burst potential. Your only real option for gameplay like this was probably the, the Bat Chatillon. The problem with that tank is it didn't have the DPM, it didn't have the uh, gun depression, and more importantly, while it was able to burst down a single target with an incredible 5 round 105mm autoloader, I talk about it as if it's gone now. No, you can still play the Bat Chantillon just like that. But it just wasn't able to burst and wasn't able to reload quickly. It wasn't able to have that kind of crazy dynamic gameplay that you can have in the TVP with getting into whatever position you need and supporting and then quickly reloading and then changing your mind and maybe putting out one two shots reloading and then not feeling like you're punished too much because the vehicle only has a 25 second reload all right so in this scenario we're actually dead even on tanks it's four vehicles and a self-propelled gun against each other we didn't have any lights but I'm hopefully trying to make up for that fact this vehicle actually has 410 meters base view range, which is phenomenal because it means that you don't need to use coated optics on this tank if you have a good crew. I go up, I thought I was going to get spotted, and thank goodness I pulled back quickly. Wow, I'm not usually that disciplined when I pull, uh, when I play World of Tanks, and I managed to get back before the, I got spotted by the AMX and the T110E3 was able to hit me. And just maintaining your hit points in an autoloader is oh so important to be able to control these situations at the end of the game. We've got three and a half minutes left to finish off these five vehicles. We have to get stuck in. We're up to 6,000 damage, but luckily, now that the T110E3 is low on hit points, I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to finish off their tank. The Conqueror gun carriage on top of the hill shuts down the T110E3 that we helped out earlier, and now we can go in after this K91. We missed the first. Does it matter? We actually don't penetrate the second because we hit the tracks. Does it matter? No, we got all four rounds out before the K91, which has phenomenal DPM and a great reload was even able to get their second round back against us. And that is what makes this tank oh so darn cool. Burst, potential, such a great assassin, a great duelist as well. With its mobility, if it's able to control the engagement to, uh, to reload the second magazine like we did at the T100LT to account for the RNG. And with that rotation device and with the vertical stabilizers, this thing just feels absolutely monstrous. Okay, talking about monstrous, there's two and a half minutes left on this game and there's an AMX 13105 that could manage to get back towards our cap circle to reset. And, whoa, either somebody left the cap there or an AMX 13105 just hit a tank. The 277 is now down to 177 hit points and the FV405 hasn't been hit, suggesting that the 13105 hit the 277. So I was thinking, shall I go back down the woods and try and find him? No, I could go on a wild goose chase. The most important thing for me to do right now is to make it so that if the Amex 13105 interrupts the cap circle again, either I'm there to be able to cap myself or alternatively, I'm there to shut down the French light tank. So now we're loading my very unique magazine in this tank because I only keep one of them. And that is four rounds of high explosive. 50 millimeters of penetration, 420 alpha damage. I keep this for when I need to go into the enemy's base and kill two artillery. But you know what? This could be a good situation as well. 435 damage and a fire. Five crits, six crits, seven crits. And within three shots, we pretty much just eviscerated that AMX 13105. Now, look, that was definitely fortunate to be able to set them on fire. Usually I keep that magazine for where you've got two self-propelled guns that you know you can penetrate and you can go in and actually kill both of them in a single magazine, which the vehicle otherwise will sometimes struggle to do with your armor piercing rounds, especially against tier 10 self-propelled guns if you fail to high roll. But also considering the vehicle doesn't have that much of a limited ammo capacity, unlike the Bat Chatillon, this thing could carry 48 rounds of ammunition compared to the Bat Chat's 30 rounds of ammunition. That, keeping that HE doesn't feel like so much of a, of a, a sacrifice as opposed to the armor piercing rounds and the heat rounds that you can keep in the tank. All in all, uh, a stellar game for here for the T uh, VP T50 slash 51, which had everything that this vehicle needed. Opportunities to burst out mags at tanks that it was spotting. Opportunities to burst out mags at tanks that it wasn't spotting. Uh, a map that was big enough for it to be able to isolate and assassinate opponents and turn it into one-on-one -on -one engagements. And enough flexibility with the ridge lines to be able to unload that mag and then fall back behind it and recover the rounds.
So an ace tanker here for the TVP with a high caliber medal for the 8,135 damage that we dealt and also the 2,500 damage upon detecting. No wonder we got an ace there for the 1,560 base. We get a tank sniper medal for dealing a lot of damage at a good range and also a top gun for that absolute obliteration of the AMX 13105. Eight crits with that magazine and that fire. This is definitely not the tank that you want to be sitting in front of for very long if at all inside World of Tanks. And so there you have it, the TVP T50-51. Still an absolute banger of a tank in 2021. Just because the Czechoslovakian heavy tanks uh, are coming out doesn't mean that you should wait to play something Czechoslovakian. If you already have this vehicle, go and try it with a vertical stabilizer, a rotation device and vents, uh, and, and let me know what you think about it. And if you're an experienced to advanced player and for some reason you've never bothered to uh, <laughs> grind through the tier 7 and the tier 8 to get to the joy that is the Skoda T50 and also the TVP T50-51, yeah, I, I, I would fully recommend it, especially with Equipment 2.0, which has made uh, autoloaders better than ever. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was it for today. Really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And if you're watching this video as it goes live on Sunday, it's time for the World of Tanks Tech Tree Showcase right now on twitch.tv forward slash quickie baby. And this week, most of you want to see Swedish heavy tanks. I've got no complaints about that. I love the Kranvang. I love all of the Swedish heavy tanks actually leading up to it. I think they're phenomenal and I'm looking forward to playing them live right now. And so come along if you've ever wondered what the Swedish hold down god tier heavy tanks all about. And if you've already got the vehicles, maybe I can give you a few tips and tricks along the way. Also today and tomorrow there are going to be drops on the channel so you can get yourself some kind of special 10 year anniversary style for World of Tanks as this is the date 10 years of World of Tanks release in Europe. And tomorrow, thanks to Wargaming, for the European server only, I'm sorry to say, I'm going to be giving away a Type 59 and 10 months of premium. So, a couple of good streams over the next couple of days to look forward to. Hopefully, I'll see all of you there. As always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic, and hopefully, I'll see you soon.